Joining us in the kitchen today is Stephen Jackson. Porter Arthur Zone is about as honest as any NBA player would be, so we asked him just about everything that we could think of. All right, Stephen, what was it like growing up in Port Arthur, Texas? Uh, it, it was tough. Um, growing up with one high school, eight sets of low income, low income housing, uh, it, it was difficult because everybody was doing the same thing. Uh, everybody was hanging out on the streets. There wasn't too much uh, positive things going there. So, you know, I just I just found a way to, to stay around good people, which is my family, and and uh, to play basketball to find a way to, to be around something positive. Do you have any one story that points to how close it could have gone in another direction? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, it was like two or, th two or three o'clock in the morning. Uh, a friend of mine named Neil, we was hanging out at his house and. At the time, you know, I was one of those guys that's cool with everybody on both sides of the city. Well, we were at his house shooting dice late night. I wasn't supposed to be out. I don't think my mom knew where I was. And uh, some guys that he had uh, beef with came by and shot up the house like 48 times, and I was outside. It was like nine of us outside, and I didn't get hit, thank God. So I, that, that was kind of my confirmation that God had something for me. Two of the guys got hit, and uh, the whole house was shot up, and I made it, I made it out safely. And, I think, you know, one of, that's one of the instances where I know that God is definitely protecting me. How much death have you seen, Stephen? Uh, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot growing up, man. Um, you know, and that's not nothing to brag on. You know, I lost my brother when I was 16. Uh, I've seen a lot of my friends uh, in incidents. I've seen a lot, man. You know, and I think, um, I think it, it's tough because you never know when it's your turn. You know, I've been in a lot of situations where I made it out, even when I was helping uh, Jamal Tinsley in Indiana with the incident with the gun at the strip club. I, my heart was in the right place. I wasn't doing anything wrong, but I almost lost my life that night. How hard is it to try to explain to people that when you shot this gun in the parking lot of a strip club that you were actually trying to do something to help? Yeah, and I actually had a gun license. You know, um, what people don't realize is I got hit by a car. All my teeth were gone. I had to have plastic surgery on my lips with no anesthesia. Imagine that having plastic surgery on your lips with no anesthesia. I couldn't because my lips were swollen enough. So I'm the one that almost died. But at the end of the day, I was helping my teammate. Guys were making the gestures as far as shooting my teammate and pulling out guns. I had a gun license. My, 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 my first reaction wasn't to shoot at anybody, so I shot in the air. But other things happened. I got hit by a car, and one thing led to another. But at the end of the day, I'd rather me wake up the next morning with half of my teeth gone and all my teammates, all my teammates and my family and friends at home safe and we'll deal with the consequences later. Among your peers, the guys you played with, who's on your dark alley team? Because you know you've got a reputation for being feared even though you don't understand grown men fearing other grown men in <laughs> professional <laughs> basketball. So who's on your dark alley team? Uh, my dark alley, I gotta go with Ron Artes, my brother. Uh, I gotta go with Zach Randolph. Uh, I got to go with Kendrick Perkins. Uh, Perk? A, 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 a mean point guard. Well, I, I need Perk out there, you know, just to play defense and, and the rebound. You know, we, we got the score and taking care of. Oh, you're going by position. You're actually putting together a full-on <laughs> yeah. basketball team. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm putting a bully basketball team together. But Zebo says that Perk is a bluffer. Zebo says he doesn't bluff, but Perk bluffs. Well, I, I, I can't speak on that. I don't, I, I mean, I don't, Perk's from, from around my way. And I've seen Perk getting a lot of answers. I don't think he's a bluffer at all. But Zach, I know Zach's not a bluffer. That's, that's my bluffer. <laughs> yeah, I we definitely all know, know. That. We, we all, all know that. Know that. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned Rod Artest. You have said that Rod Artest never thanked you for what you did at the Palace. Why do you think he should have thanked you? Because I don't think he was thinking at the time. I like the funniest thing, me and Jamal Tinsley, every time I see him, we laugh at this. Right after the brawl, we're in the locker room. And this is why I say he never said thank you. We're in the locker room. So we're sitting there, legs all scratched up from hopping over the bleachers, our adrenaline pump, because we done laid a couple people out. We feeling like we did, <laughs> we did something, you know what I mean? We all sit back and Ron Artest, aka Metal World Peace, leans back and look at Jamal Tess and asks us, Do you think we're gonna get in trouble? <laughs> I say, I say, I say, I say, I say, Ron, get in trouble. You lucky we still have a job. <laughs> That, that was the funniest thing. That was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> Trouble. You lucky we have a job, Ron? <laughs> Crazy. Well, hold on. Knowing that you're lucky you had a job, you went into the stands, way high up into the stands. What made you go in You enjoyed in there? that, Stephen. You looked like you were enjoying that. Admit now that you were enjoying pasta punching the customers. Hey, well, well, let me say this. All of racial slurs I didn't hear, all the things I didn't heard about my mom and my basketball game and my kids and, my, and all this, 
<laughs> it felt good to punch a fan one time. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I regret it. I ain't going to lie. I regret it because I lost $3 million behind and I almost lost my job. I regret it. But when I initially went in the stands, I went up there to help Ron. If you look at the tape, I go up uh, the, the, to a row above Ron because I was trying to grab him. Well, as I got up there to grab him, another fan threw another beer in his face. It was on, it was, I felt like he got assaulted at the time. So I felt like if you up here, you should be breaking up. But you throw a beer, you deserve a lick too. And he got it. You only regret the punishment. You don't regret the action. You regret that's the what, reaction. Right. The three million. <laughs> that's it. And, that's, that's, all. That's, but, that's all. That's all. That's all. Did Fred Jones ever thank you? Because Fred Jones was getting the work in the crowd before you showed hey, up. Hey, hey, that's my boy, but I think that was Ben Wallace's brother. He gave Fred Jones everything he was looking for. <laughs> everything. <laughs> I, I love that scene in the locker room after. I'm wondering the first time you watched that back on, because it was replayed a million times, the first time you saw it, were you admiring, even while knowing the consequences were coming, were you admiring your work with your fists in those stands? Nah, I, I didn't admire my work because I didn't get to do what I really could do. I was, I was <laughs> held back a lot. You know, I, 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 got, I got way more than what I showed, trust me. <laughs> way what more, more could you possibly have? You knocked like three people out with the one hit a quitter. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It's, it's, it, you, you have a better time fighting somebody that fights you back. You get to see what you got. It's not fun fighting people that don't fight back. Have you ever regretted your loyalty? Because it sounds like you're uber loyal. Have you ever regretted it? Nah, I, I don't regret it at all because, like, I'm loyal because I wish I could have been there for my brother when those guys jumped on him and I couldn't be there. You know what I mean? So that that kind of that kind of has been sticking with me my whole life. So my loyalty will never change. I mean, loyalty is something you can't teach. You got to be born with it. So I consider myself ever since Tim Duncan gave me the gave me the gave me the name of being the ultimate teammate. I take pride in that. So, and that's what I was taught playing at AAU as a young kid. You know, you go out there and play with, your, with, with, the, with the other young kids you grew up with. If one of them fight, we all fight. I mean, that's just how I was taught. Well, what's the craziest situation you wound up in based on loyalty? Uh, well, I can't say no, say no names, but uh, it was a time where, it's crazy I'm saying this, but it's, it's a time where a friend of mine was, um, I think I was like 14 or 15, and he was selling drugs, and, and uh, the drug task force that ran into his house. Well, I was we were good friends because every, actually everybody I knew did the same thing. But he called me, and they did, I knew some of the detectives, and they knew I played basketball with his little brother. So while they were ramshacking his house, I went in the house and did something for him, and brought it out the house where he didn't get in trouble. And as I was walking out the house, they stopped me to ask me questions. I'm thinking like, oh man, I hope they don't search me. I hope, and I, my life was over. But I did it out of loyalty for him, and, and thank God I got home. But wow, I would never, I would, I would never do that again. They didn't search you. How much did you have on you? What did you have on you? It, 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 it I don't want to say exactly what it was, but, but it was something that was illegal. And uh, at, at the time, I wasn't thinking about my career. I was just thinking about my friendship and my loyalty to my friend. But how much and, trouble would you have been in? Like, if whatever you uh, had on you, like, what would have been the trouble? Uh, well, nowadays with with the laws now, I probably I probably did 10 to 15 years in jail, easy. You mentioned losing your brother at a young age and having some regret. What do you still carry with you from that time? Uh, wish uh, I, I carry a lot with me. I wish he was here because you know he was a basketball player. He was taller than me, but I just think you know the first time I ever talked to a girl, the first time I snuck in the movies, everything. All the experiences as being a, a, a young teenage boy that's, that's trying to figure things out, I learned from my older brother, whether it was good or bad. So him not being here with me today to enjoy, you know, everything that God has blessed us with and through the good and bad times, because, you know, you got to learn how to enjoy the bad times. I just wish he was here to enjoy it with me. What happened that day, though, that you wish you had done differently? You mentioned that you wish you had done something differently. Yeah, um, I wasn't with him that day. And, you know, I, I was staying with my father at the time, around that time. So we were normally together, but for some reason I wasn't with him, and uh, I just wish I could have. I, I, we, we were always together, always together. So just not to be with him the day where he goes to see a girl, and um, the guy she had just broke up with was outside with three of his friends. Well, my brother was he, he's just like me. He's not going to run from anybody. It was three guys. They got to fighting, and they end up getting the best of him and busting his head with pipes and bottles, and end up being in ICU with 17 stitches in his head. So. You know, just just the just the memory of that now. You know, 
not being able to be that, it, 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 it sucks. I just wish she was here with me. I imagine that what you wanted after that point, I imagine you were seething, angry, and how did you keep yourself from revenge? Family, family. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not gonna say we didn't retaliate no way, but we didn't hurt nobody. But uh, at, at that time, I was, all I was thinking was retaliation. But like I said, I got a strong mother, a strong family, you know, that as much as I wanted to go retaliate in the wrong way, they didn't let me. And I, I, just, I just thank God that they didn't because I wouldn't be here. Look how happy Steven is to see my father. Poppy, you got a question for us. Go ahead. Go ahead, Poppy. How are you doing, Steven? Good? Fine. How are you? That's not the question. Good, good. Go ahead, Poppy. What is the most embarrassing scene you have seen? Uh, uh, wait a second. Let me do it again. What is the most embarrassing thing you have uh, caught the teammate doing in the locker room? Oh, wow. <laughs> give us that one. Whatever it is you just thought of there that you were thinking of editing, give us that one. Give it to oh. us. Give it to us. Give it to us. Come oh, on. I don't know. I can't you're, say that. You're always honest. You're, you're always <laughs> honest. No names. No all right. names. All right. No names. All right. All right. All right. I, I was in Golden State with some foreign guys. And uh, it was a couple foreign guys and, and the American guys, and we always sit on, on the different sides of the locker room because they used to do certain things in the showers. So, well, one day, uh, I'm getting ready to go in the shower, and uh, one of my teammates, Monte, Monte was like, Jack, don't go in there. I'm like, I'm like well, I'm going to have a shower. Nah, we're going to wait till they get out of the shower. The European guys was in there grabbing towels, trying to hit each other on a private with the towels in the shower. I'm like, <laughs> really? <laughs> so after a game, after you just got through wrestling with all these guys and sweating, your first start is to get in the shower and try to hit each other's private with the, with the towel. That was like, this is, this is too weird for me. Maybe I need to go on the other side and shower with the coaches. <laughs> Steven, thank you. That was awkward, clumsy, and I understand why you didn't want to share that. Thank you for being on with us. We appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, you guys, for having me, man. I appreciate it. Gracias.